Hey guys, welcome to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And I am Resistance is futile. I'm not even gonna resist that. Stuart, we're, we're both Stuart Foley. There's no, there's no. We are, we are one. We are the one host. Today we are looking at something special. We've done a uh, look at the Klingon fleet, mm -hmm. the Romulan fleet, the NX era fleet. Mm -hmm. Have we done the Romulan fleet? Yes. Yes, we have. Yes, we have yes. ships of the Romulan mm -hmm. fleet. Um, but today we're going to be looking at ships of the Borg fleet and uh, the <laughs> Borg variety. Um, what a silly kind of, episode, eh? <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, evolution, if you will, of the earliest that we've seen all the way up to the latest. So, <sighs> yes, and resistance to my bad jokes is futile, unfortunately, if you do watch our show. Yes. So. And also the fun of this is that, to be fair, Voyager was the real, like, <laughs> Borg. You know, they had a lot of Borg, and obviously we've got mm -hmm. a lot of Voyager stuff, so we're proud to produce a lot of new renders of the Borg ships, so that's really... A cool thing for this as well. So where, where we start is a weird one. We start at the future past version of a future current ship. It's the Arctic Explorer Borgified yes. in 2153. This is the final version of it Borgified. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say. What do you think of the design? But what do you think about this as a situation and what r results from it? <laughs> Oddly enough, these are Borg from First Contact. Yes. So they're kind of like the latest Borg. Uh, uh, Vo Voyages after, but yeah, it's uh, twenty yeah. twenty three seventy three Borg. Yes. So this Arctic explorer lands, finds the remains of the Borg sphere on yeah. in Antarctica. Yep. And uh, the Borg thaw out. They steal the ship, and then they start modifying it en route to the Delta Quadrant, <laughs> yeah. where they increase their propulsion. Their, everything about it, uh, it just keeps getting ramped up and up and up. And uh, finally, it does get destroyed, um, and. Yeah, uh, it, I don't know if this is a fair place to start, to be honest, but it is technically the first... Borgy five. For, yeah, the first Federation Borg-encountered ship. I, I guess what this breaks down to as, we know what the design looked, originally, looked like originally, and I guess I'll cut to that now, so you know that the before and after. So it is quite yeah. heavily modified, yeah. um, and back to the Borg one, you know. So this is, I guess, what does the Borg design look like, you know? That, that's kind of where we're going. We know what a cube looks like, but but this is where an assimilated ship looks like. You know what what has been added, what has not. It really is just a case of greeblying and pieces. Yeah. You know, um, I'm assuming a lot of these pieces are like communication antennae because they need to communicate with the, the, the hive mind. Although that's interesting. Did, if they yes. if they weren't in communication with the hive mind in their episode, if they because if they were, they would have been, uh, you know, come assimilate Earth. Sure, they not have been more original thinking like they were when Seven crashed and was lot and was and with her set of drones. Should they have not? Been more? That's a very good question. I think they were in contact with the the then, high mind, then, and I think it did kind of perk up the ears of the Borg that hey, yeah, um, I don't know. Because we don't know if the Borg were sent because of this, if the Borg were sent because of Q in, yeah. in the encounter. We kind of, it's very sketchy. Well, they um, said they said the signal would take da 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 many years. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like this emulated the episode, although I think it was, again, missed opportunity. The Borg looked incredible. I mean, the same costumes from First Contact. Of course they did. Probably a bit, bit of a missed opportunity, um, but fun. It's one of the funner early ones. Um,. But yeah, really, this Borg stuff is just greebling and some green bits. Um, yes. And just and I guess guns, because they built guns. The, the Arctic Explorer wasn't we weaponized. And so they built weapons into the ship. And I... So I... Because I mean, they upgraded the... Uh, yes, just upgrading as we speak. Yeah, so if they upgraded the ship from a transport vessel, unarmed transport, to a ship that could take on an X-01 and also be faster very soon... Is that all just nanoprobes? I mean, can nanoprobes do that much? Well, they can regenerate damaged tissue and uh, damaged uh, implants. So I would assume, yes, they, they can. Because when we done our we did our specials on the Borg ships, uh, we did say that there's little small nanoprobes that roll into position to repair mm. damage to the outside of the ship. Mm. So yeah, I can see that being a thing that is creating these new components. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And also, obviously, they're using knowledge of hundreds of years in the future. Like, they could obviously say, well, this is a rubbish plasma injector. We'll just take these three components off this guy's arm from the 23rd century, slap him on, yeah. boom, we've got warp eight. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we do know once they plug into technology, it very quickly yeah. starts to become borgified and create new yeah. circuits and things. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, that was just the first something Borg chronologically. But the real first Borg, 2365, so that's a hell of a jump, is the very yeah. first Borg cube. So, thoughts, Stuart? <sighs> uh, I remember seeing it and going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scary not knowing uh you know which is the front which is the back it doesn't you know it's just a cube uh and it was quite intimidating when from the size seeing it compared to the enterprise d because we knew that was pretty big uh back in the day so and the fact that they were it started chasing them and you yeah. know torpedoes wouldn't stop it you could actually see the ship regenerating yeah. as uh to correct the damage it was just scary to see it um as a kid and yeah it's an interesting design i mean it's so simplistic yet so full. I don't know. It's just yeah. It's yeah. And we have a direct comparison at the end between the four different cube seam because they did actually rejigger every single time. Yes. And it's worth noting just just on the offset, this cube has no internal lighting, has no green lighting. This was not a thing developed yet, so it's very. I mean, to light this was absolute horror because it's just like grey. Mon I mean, it is monotone, really. There's teeny shades of other things, but it's basically yeah. grey and off-grey. Um, I, I really like the green additions, the, the plug-in. I really think that dimensionizes it. Mm. This is far more looks like a prop, like a toy, you know, um, the simplicity of it, um, which then takes us into the next cube, which was uh, the year, the next year. This is Best of Both Worlds, and, and we can mm. see it's actually different. What do you see as differences with this to the last one then? Uh, there's more color differences. Yeah. Uh, there's more of a, like a yellowish hue, and then there's also the green. You can see some lighting in there. Mm. Yeah, um, not not really green so much. I mean, you it's white lighting of sort of it. here and there. But yeah, yeah. Um, this seems more put together. And, it's, and it also looks like if you jump back for a second, there seems to be bigger components inside this cube, jump to the new one. It seems to be much more about the single tubes. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a network of interconnected tubes rather than big components. Yeah. I don't know if I, how I feel about that, because I don't think it feels as functional. Like, I'm wondering why and what are they, you know? More, mm. I guess. Could just be that the smaller components are easier to repair if they get damaged. Um, yeah, cause that, that's true. Yeah, they're a lot smaller. They're a lot uh, easier to reconstruct. Uh, it could be too that they're just they've you know, started out with larger components near the center, and as they just attach mm. new ones to increase the size as they go That's along. Cool. So, that, yeah, cool idea. So, oh, and the one after that is from was it Iborg? Uh, Data Law, the one Redemption. No, Descent, Descent Part Ones and Descent. Two. Yes, yes. Um, and this is an interesting design, which we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I feel about this one. <laughs> it kind of uh, steps through. Three years later, it's officially called the Borg Type 3. Yeah. Just the background there. And it really steps out of the box. It even has the Borg symbol on it, uh, the red claw, which I don't know where they got that from. Well, it's, it, 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 it is in the first appearance. It's there on the wall. True. Because you need a symbol if you're an amorphous set of people that have one mind. Sure. You had a graphic designer just sort of... Because it'd be fine well, if they, someone else invented simulated it. a graphic designer and he's like, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, they simulated uh, uh, Da Vinci and, 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 and just wanted to paint something cool. Well, it looks um, like a bear claw, so maybe it was some kind of bear-like species that they yep, assimilated. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep, yep. Anyway, interesting design, very <laughs> asymmetrical, not like yeah. we've seen before from the Borg, uh, which is just geometric shapes. This is very much outside that box, literally outside that cube. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's interesting, because we're doing look at this in time order, canon-wise, which is not anywhere near the order it was designed in, but it gives you a new perspective on things. So now, if you think about the Enterprise design, which was an is initial core, shapes being built around it, we're not clear if this was a Borg ship, or a Borg assimilated ship, or a Borg enhanced mm. ship, or a Borg stolen ship, because they were not Borg necessarily. I mean, you couldn't see necessarily, you know, the Borg in that episode assimilating people in mass. That's not their purpose. 
But if you think of it as perhaps it was, you know, this middle component, which is still a geometric shape, which still fits the Borg aesthetic, and maybe they, they used nan nanoprobes to build these outer zones, which all had a certain function. Maybe they wanted to say, oh, we're only a scout ship Mark II, but we want transwarp. Let's let's build the transwarp bit at the top, and because it's, it's all Borg, it's just geometric shapes. Um, what do you think about that? Uh... <sighs> Yes, I can sort of see that, but at the same time, I have a feeling that this is probably a civilian ship from a different race that they might have uh, commandeered. And but it's still so borgy in its simple shapes, though. Like it still is not a random alien, like unless it's a for you know, it, it's a weird hybrid. It could be either. It could be neither. Well, the fact that it has windows makes me think that it's a civilian. Well, ship I don't, of some sort. I, well, you, I dis, I don't agree that necessarily windows. Um. I, I, I sort of see them more as power emitter. I mean, again, look on the board cubes. They don't have the green lights. I mean, they just yeah. they just or, or it's just it's so damaged by the fight or whatever they're doing well, or disrepair. They're, they're just whatever's underneath the armor. Um, yeah, and well, again, just to say this is the Fabio Fabio's amazing model from uh, Eagle Moss. Just yeah. want to point out. Well, take this out of context though. Take away the fact that you even know the Borg are associated with this thing. Yeah. And we saw this. This looks like a civilian cruise ship of some kind for some. Well, that'd be sleeker. Take Not necessarily. Ship. I mean, cruise ships are very much bulky, and there's a lot of windows. I mean, it just that's what I would get from this. It's a civilian kind of passenger ship. Not meant, you know, it's got no armaments that are visible. It's got nothing that says engines per se, so it's a very slow sh vessel, you would think. Maybe yeah. from system to system, planet to planet, whatever. Just like a luxury liner. That's what I get out of this ship. <sighs> Yeah, and out of context completely, I see it as more of a, um, <clears throat> a, a blocky because that's the most efficient use of space. Cargo, can, you know, cargo hauler, like the uh, I see that. like the uh, the one in Alien. You know, it's just these big. Well, that was a refinery, but not. It's just the big raw shapes. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just big components. You know, you hire out each pod for for a, a service. Uh, top yeah. and lower, and the middle bit is another pod, and you've got a bridge unit in the middle. You sit, you sit in your hammock, and you take an automatic course that just slugs along. It's actually pretty. See that as well. It's yeah. just cargo. It's just an alien race that does not care about aesthetics. It's like a very a logical race without aesthetics. You know, Vulcans, but without their personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can uh, see that. Anyway, going back to the Borg thing. <laughs> yeah, back um, to Borg. It was just quite a step outside the Borg box as far as uh, ship L designs that we've seen to that <laughs> such, point That's go. such a clever comment, outside the Borg box. I know. Box. I saw you saying it. Same. I could say it was Borg cube then. Um, but so it was unique because it was because of the Borg that they lib liberated from the Borg in an earlier episode that him and Lord teamed up, I guess, and got some rogue Borg. So they didn't want to be Borg, so they didn't present as Borg, really and their ship design i don't know it just it was such a strange deviation from what we had seen i, I think it's borgy enough in shape but i think it's a it's a borg ship built through chaos you know i could the, buy that they know basic geometric shapes but they have not got a central reason to build them and so they build the ship based on you know they're not used to just thinking for themselves so it's take the simple that's why i say even if just the front even if one piece was or even there's there's a core ship in the middle that was a a, a dark, you know a simple geometric shape and they built out because they whatever you know the, the, how long they would and obviously data data law i mean he had a different perspective maybe he wanted maybe he helped retro i mean we, we don't know literally nothing about the design so we're trying to piece it back together but it, it's, a, it's a design that's clearly borg not borg or not borg borg so it can and both be neither. And I like that, you know? <laughs> it's a yeah, cool it's, shape. It's a cool ship, though. Which is weird how boxy it is. Yeah. But it's definitely a unique standout in the Star Trek lineup of ships. I just wish that episode was better. Descent Pot 1 and 2. Yeah. Because it wasn't great. Uh, no offense no. to them. Yeah. Uh, next ship, though, we see Four years is... Four later. This first contact. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it looks here. It looks less like pipes and small components, and more back to the bigger shapes. Well, almost no it looks piping. a lot more. Yeah, it looks a lot more sturdy, and you got those yeah. really impressive yeah. green glows in certain areas that just look like they're important. Um, so this is again, this is also big screen. So it was that step up in the visual 
to make it yeah. uh, really stand out. So, yeah, this is Borg Cube Mark Four. It's interesting that you mentioned all the lights. Yeah, it's got the green, but it's still got those white lights of the yeah. original. So I like it's an in, in between. But actually, if you look at the surface, I know it's been in a battle, and you, I think you probably argue it's been damaged. It's been pieces have been beaten away. Yeah. Um, but since we know the cubes were never actually flat, you can argue the other way. I mean, look at next to Data's head. It, it has so many grooves in and out. Like, it's so not flat. I, I actually kind of like the randomness of it being just plates upon plates. Like you said earlier in the episode, you know, they just added components and just kept mm. adding different, like, it's just, well, we need this piece. There you go. So I really like it. It feels, it feels, I mean, it, it does feel like the highest quality ship we've seen and probably will ever, see, you know what I mean? It, it has everything it needs. This is a definitive ball cube, in my opinion. Um, I would agree. Yeah. 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 But as we know, this thing also does do something else in this movie. It launches. It blows up. The, oh, well, that too. But right before it does that, <laughs> it launches the sphere, um, which is supposed to be like the queen's personal ship. Well, that's the vibe. That's the vibe I got from it when I first watched it. Really? Um, I just yes. thought it was like an escape craft or an assim. Well, that's, I'm, I'll get it. when we get to the ball cube end bit, we'll discuss. You know, each cube was. Is different, but it was designed for a different thing, maybe because each appearance has a different vibe. Anyway, we'll get into that later. Yeah, I mean, personal ship. I mean, does this make more sense for a queen ship? I mean, uh, what did you think seeing a sphere for the first time and and a doubling down on the shapes? I never would have assumed that they would launch a, a sphere out of a cube. It just it never occurred to me. It, 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 and I know, yeah. I know they they stayed away from the the sphere look for a reason they didn't want to emulate the death star and so the <laughs> development process for this was pretty interesting yeah uh but i didn't expect that when i saw it just for for, for a round shape to come out of a cube <laughs> shaped like this the round it's the round peg in the square hole thing it's like it doesn't work but it does at the same time uh i just remember going huh okay Oh, fine then. You know they're not we'll very clever. That. They're not very clever with their shapes. They're very rudimentary. But uh, I mean, you could probably do a quick justification of you know the the sphere is a faster. It's meant to be a, a, a long range scout in one version. They said and a, you know it's, it's a multi. It's more multi purpose in the cube. Because and the sphere is the most common shape in nature. It's everywhere. Mm. Planets, raindrops. It's just yeah. It's it's the most the simplest shape mm. for nature. So it Strongest just makes shape. sense. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes sense yeah. to have it. So, so I was, I was going to say, you know, it could be that this is the one that has the, the trans warp, you know, feeds off this shape the best. So mm -hmm. this is the, the one you would send ahead of the cube to be faster or pull back. Or, you know, if you need, you know, this is, this is the shuttle. It's the captain's. Well, like you said, link to the, you know, whatever. Yeah. That makes sense. And it's, I mean, it's a cool design. It, it's obviously, we got very close to it. It's a lot smaller. So the plate detail, but it's definitely an interesting in between. It feels more like a, is it weird to say an organic shape? Like every piece has a much more functional feel. Like it feels like it's all interconnected now, rather than just here is a shape. Like yeah. so many teeny details that well, they must all do something. It's, yeah, it's funny you said that because it does feel way more organic. Like I said, the most common shape in nature, a cube doesn't exist in nature. Straight edges and ninety degree angles don't exist in nature. Yeah. So that's so unnatural to then go to something that's so organic and natural. It's just. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you always kind of want in first contact the cube to like spin into four cubes, like smaller cubes. Wouldn't that make more sense? Or it shoots out small, small cubes from the big cube. Yeah, yeah. That, Speaking that, of yeah. cubes, but we'll talk about those later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is the first sphere design, and obviously the higher quality one because it was a physical miniature, right at the end of the physical miniature era, and yeah. lovely. It's a really nice miniature. But no, no lighting, no internal lighting in this press shot. And this is the big, famous high res one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Don't know how I feel about and that. this is the one that gets destroyed. That ends up the re the remains are in Ar Antarctica, and that's what starts off with the first one we saw, the Arctic Explorer. So the Borg that created the Arctic Explorer were on this one. So and that's interesting. If you jump back to that ship for a second, look at what this ship has. Lots of more organic um, piping detail. Jump back to the cube. Unlike at the sphere, it has a lot more piping, small detail, connecting points. I mean, the first cube did too. Well, the second cube did, but this actually does have a lot of those things. So if you imagine this is where they're coming from, they might link it more to whatever. But there is actually a slight connection, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. 
Uh, the next one, we are jumping same year, but Voyager. Um, it, even though the movie and Voyager take place in different film, different years, but chronologically the same ish year. This is the first Borg cube model from Voyager from Scorpion, where they know they had to bring the Borg in, they had to make a 3D model of it. So this is, you know, first bit of CG that's limited, um, and this is basically what we see for the rest of the Voyager set, especially, you know, obviously in Endgame, we see a ton of them. So what do you think of this, and how has this changed? Well, for me, this is the definitive Borg cube. I mean, it's it's got that black appearance almost, mm. and then the the spots of green lighting, and it's got both small and large components on the outside. Yep. It's not necessarily a flat surface. There are some bigger sections that stick out, and it seems more menacing that way. Mm. So this is very much the scary, really like intimidating Borg, um, mm. in my mind. Uh, so yeah, that's is the definitive Borg cube for me. Yeah, it, it's yeah not the highest quality. If you zoom in, you can see problems with it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the green is such an important thing. It just adds so much depth to it. It means you can do- light it darker, and that's menacing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like imagine you you know you, you're asleep at night and suddenly boom, green light turns on. It's like oh, that's not good. Green light in the dark, not good. But this this ball cube kind of feels more random. A little bit. Like it's got a weird chaos, which in a sense then is like it's not about aesthetics. As I said with the first contact one, but that had a certain more constructed vibe. They just put pieces on the hull. You know, they built a certain structure. Yeah, yeah I need need to add stuff. Boom, it's, it's on there. Um, it's kind of an organized chaos, which yeah. in, in and of itself is scary. Yes, the fact that they're like zombies that are out of control yep. yet controlled by one central mind. It's very terrifying the whole ordeal. So yeah, the organized chaos is kind of yeah. defines the Borg, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That is this week's Trek Yards done and dusted. Next week, we've got another great part. Yes, the continuation. Next week, tune in. So, seven days and just uh, click on that link. So, we'll see you then. See you then, guys.